All right, let's get started with 6.2, converting metric units. I like this unit, uh, this section a lot because, well, the conversions, at least to me, are very easy. So uh, just the same thing like we did in the last section. Select the unit that best fits the scenario. A box of ice cream contains one blank of ice cream. Now, I guess this kind of depends on how much you eat or how much you purchase. But let's look at the type of units that we'll be looking at for this problem. We got, uh, well, I guess in terms of capacity, that's the only one we're looking at. So we're not looking at length, right? It's how much it contains. It's, well, you could say mass, I suppose, right? I think ice cream, which I'm very familiar with, just not the labels. Sometimes it's, it'll tell you how much ice cream a container has in grams or something like that. But well, let's just look at the capacity though. We're looking at either liters or milliliters in this case. So I personally would say it contains one liter because milliliters, not that I'm super familiar with them, but they're pretty small, okay? So I would say one liter in this case. Well, can we use conversion factors for this? Yes, we can. And that's why we have these conversion factors right here. You guys will notice this list of con conversion factors here. We're gonna use this chart differently though. But for now, let's look just look at this with conversion factors. Just like we said before in the last section, we can manipulate the math by just looking at one as any conversion factor because one is anything divided by itself. So we'll use conversion factors to convert 5,478 milliliters to liters. So yeah, it showed it was 1,000 milliliters equals one liter. So we'll take that 5,478 milliliters, and we always put that value over one, then we'll multiply it by the conversion factor to make the milliliters in this case cancel away. So I need the milliliters in the denominator and liters in the numerator so that uh, it does convert into liters. Well, it's one liter is 1,000 milliliters. And from here, we can see the milliliters cancel. And by fraction multiplication, I would get 5,478 over 1,000 in liters which when I put into my calculator would give me 5.478 liters. And I would want the decimal on this one. It did say not to round. But the decimal one is a lot, well, it's a lot more convenient, which we're going to see here in a moment. Um, but hopefully it even makes more sense than what the improper fraction would be. Now, hopefully you guys see here, 5.478 it kind of repeats, right? We started with 5, 4, 7, 8. Just what happened between what we started with and what we ended with? Well, it just it just changed where the decimal was. And that's because we divided by a base 10 value like 1,000. You can divide by 100 or 10 or 1 or 10,000. It doesn't matter. If we're dividing by a 1 with a bunch of zeros like 1,000 is, all you're doing is moving the decimal, you guys. So the question is, which direction do we move the decimal? Well, that's what we need that other chart for instead of the conversion factors, which is how I'm going to be doing the rest of these problems because uh, while I think there is a couple problems that want the dimensional analysis, hopefully we have that down pretty good. But with metric units, we can simply move the decimal because it's always base 10. And that's what this chart is showing, right? Like it's the base units are meters, liters, and grams. Okay, so a thousand grams is a kilogram, or a hundred grams is a hectogram. Ten grams would be a decagram, and the base unit is grams. And again, this would work with meters and liters. Uh, 0.1 grams would be a decigram, and that's a tenth of a gram, by the way. 
a centigram is a hundredth of a gram, and then a milligram is a thousandth of a gram. So just like we did with that last example with liters and milliliters, it takes a thousand of these to make a full base unit. It takes a hundred of these centa units to make a full unit. And then finally, makes it takes 10 of these deca, deci units to make a full base unit. So if, if we can understand that, then again, it just becomes a matter of moving the decimal. So it, it, with the base units, right, on this chart, we got uh, the base units are grams. I'll write these out. And the I guess the single letter symbol for that is just a lowercase g. You have liters, which is a capital L. That's a, that's not an F, you guys, that's a T. Liters, a capital L, and then meters, usually denoted with the lowercase m. And these are the base units. So, um, like, again, looking at grams, this would be milligrams. Centigrams would be lowercase cg. Decigrams is lowercase dg. Now, we don't see a lot of decigrams or even decigrams, mostly because they are pretty similar right there. Uh, base units, of course, would just be grams. Decigrams, I want to say it's um, dc, but I'm trying to think if it was. It may just be a capital D, D dg like that. And then hecto, again, just hg, and then kilograms, kg, like that. So same problem, right? 5,478 milliliters. Now, of course, we're going to change this into liters, all right? So I would write this out, 5, 4, 7, 8. And I've given myself more space between the numbers than maybe you would need to. Now this is milliliters. We're we're converting it into the base unit in liters, right? This right now is in milliliters. Now on this chart it shows that liters in relationship to milliliters is one, two, three units to the left. Now for 5478, the decimal is to the right of eight, the ones the ones place value. Now, see how it, it went one, two, three to the left on the chart? Well, for 5,478, the decimal is going to move three place values to the left. So one, two, three, and the answer is 5.478, again, in liters. So you, you can see we can end up with the same answer as we did with the dimensional analysis but using a different method. And I like this method because it's just a matter of moving the decimals, that's it. So when I see a problem like this one, I got 8.5 meters. So again, I would write that out, 8.5. I identify in the chart what I'm dealing with. Meters is a base unit. Centimeters is right here, centi, C, um, CM in this case. And that is one of two places to the right of meters. Okay, and again, we're going from meters to centimeters. So we start with the units we have, meters, and we go to the units we're trying to get to, which is centimeters, which is two boxes to the right. So I move the decimal place two spots to the right, making that 850 centimeters. Now, hopefully this makes sense, right? Because it takes 100 centimeters to make one full meter. So if I have 8.5, it's going to be 100 of those. So 8.5 times 100 is 850. But I really like this idea of using the chart to move the decimal because you guys should have access to this chart when you take the final. You definitely should have access to it when you take the quiz. All right, what if the units are not in, well, I guess this one is in base units. I apologize. Well, let's look. We got 50, right? 50 of these milligrams. So milli, this one here on the right, 
going to grams, which is the base unit. So that's milligrams to grams. Well, the decimal is, I'm sorry, the boxes. It's one, two, three boxes to the left. And we're going from milligrams to grams. So this decimal will move exactly the same way. One, two, three place values to the left. And if you end up with any empty place values like this, you just put a zero in there. So this ends up being 0 0.050 grams. And yeah, you don't really need to put that zero there. So if you want to just say... So here we're going to convert five point, uh, 0 0.57 liters to centiliters. Now liters is our base unit, so that's where we're going to start. And we're going to end with centiliters. So again, there's the centi, so it'd be centiliters here in purple. And in the boxes, this shows one, two place values to the right. So when I take my 0 0.57, I need to move the decimal two place values to the right, one, two, which then makes that 57 centiliters. Hey, you know, if you want to write centiliters, that's fine, but on the homework, I think you just need to type the number, and it will always say already say centiliters. All right, for this one, let's convert these grams into milligrams. So we're going to start with 0 0.21 of these grams. So where do we start with? We start with grams. Again, that's a base unit. We're converting it into milligrams, which is not a base unit. That's okay. And we can see in the boxes, this moves one, two, three times to the right. So in this 0 0.21, we need to move the decimal three times to the right. And again, where I got an empty place value, I'm just going to fill it in with zero. And this now becomes 210 milligrams. That's what I like about this unit, or this section of the unit, is that it's just a matter of moving the decimal. If you move the decimal, you know how many times to move the decimal, then the process of converting between metric units, just metric to metric, becomes very simple. You just know how many times to move the decimal. Uh, in all other cases, though, we need a dimensional analysis. So we're going to be seeing a lot more of it in the other sections for this unit.